Good evening, Metal Faithful. It is I, your mandated reporter, and frankly, I'm mortified, Mr. Mark Rattledge. And this is the Metal Hammer of Doom. Joining me tonight is my cohort, my co-host, my brother from another mother, my hetero life mate, Jesse Starcher. How do you do? Mark Rattledge, are you ready for some fun? (laughs) <laughs> so tonight we are, uh, as we are wont to do on this podcast, we are going right off the beaten path. Um, we are a metal podcast, but sometimes we don't do metal. Sometimes we do some other fun things. Sometimes we do a little Wu-Tang Clan. Sometimes we do a little Weezer. And sometimes we do bands that don't begin with W. That's true. Um, we did, the, back in April, uh, when Mortal Kombat came out, we did a podcast uh, that reviewed selections from the various TVT Mortal Kombat soundtracks. And uh, we kind of discovered a happy hardcore band called Scooter, which we instantly fell in love with. And because I um, have ADD, I immediately started researching Scooter in the middle of the podcast. And it turns out they have an album that came out this year called God Save the Rave. Immediately had to go on the schedule. Yup. Knocked off other things on the schedule to make room for this. Scooter changed the schedule which is i mean you if you're going to give a uh you know you're checking those boxes off for an artist well right there okay you guys have done one thing in your life and that's made mark change the schedule (laughs) okay so you guys can probably put that at least somewhere a, a small part on the tombstone yes sir um, so here's the deal. God Save the Rave is the 12th studio album by German band Scooter, uh, as I said before, released on April 16, 2021, through Sheffield, Tune, Sheffield Tunes and Contour Records. It is the first studio album featuring Sebastian Schild, who replaced Phil Speiser in 2019. It's also the first Scooter album not to be released after the usual one-year, two-year gap, being released almost four years since uh, 2017's Scooter Forever. Uh, April 2019, Scooter officially announced their new member, Sebastian Schild, would be replacing Phil Speiser after Speiser had been with the group since 2014. Their 12th album was set to be released in the winter of 2020. It would be titled God Save the Rave and include 15 tracks. The album's tour, God Save the Rave Tour, was originally expected to go ahead in the summer of 2020, but COVID. Mm. Um, It is expected to take place in 2022. And I know that you and I are going to see Rage Against the Machine in the summer of 2022 for my birthday this year. That's right. Um, but uh, if Scooter goes on tour and comes anywhere between Cleveland, uh, comes anywhere between <laughs> Ohio and Florida, I think we need to save the rave, Jesse Starcher. Uh, I am completely on board for that. <laughs> um, I think we need to wear loose pocketed Jeff Hardy type pants, and we need to bring water bottles, and uh, we need to Listen, uh, we need, we need to roll. If if we're just going to talk about the uh, stank to girl ratio versus a Rage Against the Machine or a scooter concert, okay, I guarantee you there's going to be a lot of cute girls at the scooter concert versus all the stank at the the Rage Against the Machine. All all the angry men at Rage Against the Machine. (laughs) Yeah. Um, The album was supposed to come out in December of 2020, but was postponed till April um, due to... uh, due to the lockdown happening in Europe. So uh, there are 15 tracks, but the first one's kind of just, you know, like an intro type deal. Um, And that's about a minute, almost two minutes long. So I cut that one from this. Uh, We're down to 14. Uh, Let's get into it, man. Let's just tear through this thing. Let's let's put on our loose fitting pants and our hockey jerseys and our glow sticks and our water bottles. And let's convince the let's convince people that you're high on uh, ecstasy. I love it. I love it. Let's do it. Here we go. Uh, First couple of tracks here are, and we're going to play these three at a time. We've got God Save the Rave, Never Stop the Show, and We Love Hardcore. Oh, yes, we do. Thank you. 
Ryan coming at ya. Scooja. Dimitri Vegas. Like Mike. We force playing louder. I know technically we're a metal podcast, but I fucking love that shit. <laughs> Man, it is some good heart pumping. Like, arena is lit up. It is on fire. The place is just coming unglued. Uh, it, it, uh, it, sound. I mean, my gosh. You cannot understate how much fun you're having in these first three full songs that we get. Uh, and it the pace continues throughout this album. We started off, which, look, uh, okay, God Save the Rave. Uh, we go through the intro, and then we get this, and it's more of an intro, and it's hilarious because you have our, our good buddy, the vocalist, uh, what is his name, Baxter? I want to say Baxter. It's BP, uh, BP, oh my goodness, HPB, okay, HP Baxter. I think um, you get that if you bang around too much in college. <laughs> well, there is a point where he s- says his initials, and I was like, did he say HPV? <laughs> and awesome. then I was like, oh, no, wait a second. That's his initials, HPV. But anyway, uh, he goes, at the beginning, he's like, I am your captain, and my name is Dave. And I'm like, who the fuck is Dave? <laughs> I had a similar reaction. I was like, I, was, I am Dave. Well, hello, Dave. <laughs> what the, what the, why? Why is this? Why are you telling us your name is Dave? There's not a single fucking person that's been associated with the band named Dave. I looked. I don't understand. <laughs> I, I, The closest I got was there was a reference to, I think, a song or an album mm-hmm. that was, like, by Scooter, but... It was, I, unless they're doing some kind of deep reference, and you got to understand, folks, it, this is the Metal Hammer of Doom. This is kind of like our first real exposure to Scooter. So we don't know all the in-jokes, because there's plenty of times, like if you opened up the third book in a series and you started reading, and you kind of don't know what came before it, there's a lot of times in this album where I was like, okay, that's an inside joke I just don't get. Yeah. And culturally also as well, I mean, we're... we're this band they're from Germany right Mm -hmm. so we're a little bit separated uh, when it comes to some of the things that maybe they're referencing that maybe we just don't get I I have a couple questions as we continue through the album I'll probably bring up but before you do yeah in 2020 in a 2021 interview the lead writer Helen Henpierre described Scooter as one of the inspirations behind the game Disco Elysium do you know what Disco Elysium is no, I've heard of Elysium Fields, but it's a, Disco Elysium. It's a role-playing video game developed and published by ZA-UM. <laughs> Never heard of it. I'm looking it up right now, though. Okay. PS4, okay. Um, just from what I can see, based off some of these screenshots, wow. Uh, reminds me of some... Fallout, like some of the original Fallout before it became a first-person shooter, <laughs> uh, which is pretty crazy. The Disco Elysium Final Cut. Okay, see, so he was the. So this guy's been around since what? We I think it was the early '90s. I mean, the and the beat goes on. Came out in 1995. Yeah, so you know he's got quite a lineage here, and I wish yeah. I could say I know what came before. I have no idea. I just know what I've got so far in this album has been a lot. Of fun, I can tell um, you what came before the ultimate oral orgasm. That was the name of an album in 2007. Yes. Oh, that's fucking fantastic. <laughs> that is great. Yes, sir. All right. I will point out just yes. real quick. I will yep. point out as we go through. There's a bit of a formula here, mm-hmm. uh, and you'll notice it. And I'll just kind of go ahead and put this out there. 
scooter things get quiet female vocalist and then all the shit hits the fan all right <laughs> that's kind of what we're going to get as we go through the formula for the rest of this album pretty much so be prepared yes sir dave uh, be- <laughs> <laughs> All right, next three songs are, speaking of Dave, Paul is Dead, Bass Drum, and Which Light Switch is Which? The source is the power of the force. Ain't that the truth? <laughs> What's that? I didn't catch it. <laughs> oh, uh, I, I, I wish we could stay forever young. Oh yes, yes indeed. Uh, so so I, 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 I got to ask you real quick. 
So yes. do you remember back when you were a kid? Um, you know, you you lived in the suburbs most of your life. I'm sure. Uh, yeah. I know I did. And there was always like I don't. I mean, I mean, you're we're, we're close in age. Like we established this a couple of months ago that you know we're about two years apart. And do you remember like the douchebag that would uh, you know get an IROC and <laughs> would roll down the street and he had it all souped up, you know, with the with like the crazy sound system and he had uh you know the uh the, what is it the bazooka tube in the back you know oh, and he yeah. had like the tricked out speakers and he always had to play and, and every douchebag that drives an iroc always had to play techno because he had to make sure everyone knew his base in his car could blow up a fucking battleship oh uh, well, you know what i'm talking I, about yeah we didn't have techno going when uh you know when i witnessed all that it was mostly mm. It was mostly rap, but yes, you absolutely had to feel the bass that was coming out of his car. I if only can remember... he had no, if only he could have time traveled, <laughs> said douchebag, <laughs> and found Scooter's bass drum because oh. we're here to celebrate the bass drum. That's right. You you cannot escape the bass 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 drum drum. Uh, so I have a. I have this vision in my head mm -hmm. that H.P. Baxter, yes. our vocalist here, okay, he is always at a rave wherever he goes, sure. no matter what the, what the situation. Now, now, here's what I'm saying. No matter what the situation, it right. could be at the dinner table. Yeah. It, it could be at the doctor's office. He's at the grocery store filling up the lettuce. His mother's wake. Right. He's like, hey, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> His name is Mark. My name is Jesse. Welcome to the show. It's so like, I said a couple of months back to Chris Bailey that if when I die, I want to be died buried in my in my earphones, with my microphone and no pants. Yeah, yeah. But I want this guy to announce my fucking death. <laughs> Just straight up, get ready for the show. <laughs> yep, I want my Here funeral. To, I want my funeral to be a rave. And I and I and I want my wife to say to my kids through tears in her eyes, "This is what your father wanted." As they are completely, they don't understand what's going on. <laughs> they have no idea. Um, yeah. So, Paula's dead's good. That that's a fun one. Uh, you can't you can't beat hanging out with a guy named Timmy Trumpet. That's pretty funny. It's a solid one. Um, yep. Bass drum's good. It's it's okay. It gets a little annoying, but. It's only two minutes and fifty five seconds, so I, li I like Face Drum a lot. I mean, granted, it, it brought me right back to you know the mean streets of Long Island with all them white folk um, <laughs> driving I rocks, fucking Thunderbirds, uh, T tops. Yep, yep, I get you. Yep, just uh, straight up late eighties, early nineties white douchebags. <laughs> those were my people. So out of those three, I mean, I've really enjoyed Paul's Dead, but y you know we haven't. Let off the gas. Obviously, no. that's what we're going to get. Scooter's going to Scooter's going to bring it to us. I don't mean to like repeat myself, but I, I I know we're a metal podcast. But I mean, like I can't like I'm banging my head to this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like for a te for a techno album, for a rave album, for a happy hardcore album. You know, this is pretty metal. It's good. It's good. I mean, I've probably listened to this album five times today and enjoyed every little bit of it. So. You know, it's really it's just good today. Stuff. Did you listen to it back in June? I listened to it. I listened to it, Mark. <laughs> Don't make me time travel right now. <laughs> That's the last thing I want to do. All right. Instead of time traveling, how about we reminisce about 2020? Yeah. That sounds okay. good. Matter of fact, Jesse, oh, did my mouse just fucking die on me? God damn oh, it. wow. Oh, God. I have a feeling that you were going to say. Fuck 2020. I would love to say fuck 20. There we go. The mouse is back. Now oh, I can say. Thank now, for the love of Christ, I can say fuck 2020. I don't give a penny. Fuck 2020! Save the rave, then we save the world.
we can't no more. No obstacle can hold us back. You know we're unstoppable. It's not impossible. We start full ball. Keep running because we know we're unstoppable. We're running till we can't no more. No obstacle can hold us back. You know we're Dancing till we fade. DJ hang the DJ <laughs> it's funny um like I know you were like sending me messages saying hang the DJ earlier today before we uh, did the show and I was like why is he quoting Morrissey oh he's fucking doing scooter <laughs> uh wow so okay we get into these three we got fuck 2020 groundhog day and hang the DJ so fuck 2020 has one of the most head scratching lyrics off of this album. And there's quite a few. <laughs> we don't give a penny. Fuck 2020. By I the mean, way, that's... I was driving around with that playing. <laughs> my kids are in the car. No, well, of course. Okay. And my son's like in really enjoying this. Like, like he, he tends to favor techno. I have to tell you something that happened a little ways back, actually, around my birthday. Um, it's funny I'm remembering it now in July. <laughs> but... <laughs> And my birthday uh, was June second. Um, I, uh, yeah, I, that's crazy. <laughs> but we're, we, we, you know, we were we're planning another trip um, next year, we're pl- like with my parents, like, another like big family trip um, around spring break. And you know, we started talking about like other trips that we're doing. Um, you know, like a year from now, uh, we're going to come up to Ohio. We're going to see you. We're going to go see Rage Against the Machine, like we were talking about before. Um, but you know, like, there's also a bunch of concerts this year. Uh, that I'm taking my daughter to, and you know, I'm taking my wife to go see Guns N' Roses for our anniversary. 
um, and all that. And I'm, I mean, we were just having this conversation at dinner. And Jonas, who isn't into music, he likes this. He likes Scooter, is the point of this story. But he's generally not into anything that I listen to. And, you know, like metal-wise, like it's like it's too much for him. And so, like, I tend to bring my daughter, who's, like, more accepting and into music and 10 um, and not 7. So he hears me talking about taking Lily to all these different concerts, and he gets mopey. I'm like, why are you moping? He's like, because I want to go. Like, you don't like fucking music or leaving your room. What do you mean you want to (laughs) go? And he was like, I want to go to the concerts, too. I'll dance. I'll have fun. And I'm like... You don't want to be excluded is your problem. You don't give a shit about these bands or comp music or anything else. You just can't stand that your sister gets to do stuff and you can't. <laughs> but yeah. I promised him going going forward, I would if I'm going to bring Lily, I'll bring him too. And he just has to promise to not be a douchebag about it. Good. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Um. Speaking of douchebags, no, uh, that's a really horrible transition. Oh, uh, before we before we continue, I just want to talk about not douchebags, but one of our great sponsors here on the show, and that's Grammarly. You know all about Grammarly. I do. Grammarly's AI powered products help people communicate more effectively. Grammarly helps you write mistake free on Gmail, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and nearly anywhere else you write on the web. Grammarly corrects hundreds of grammar punctuation spelling mistakes while also catching contextual errors improving your vocabulary and suggest style improvements to download grammarly today go to getgrammarly.com slash w2m network again it's getgrammarly.com slash w2m network to download grammarly for free all right so talk to me about these three tracks oh well okay so grammarly could have helped out with possibly suggesting something different than the final lyric to fuck 2020 was Stuck on the wrong channel, like chained to a dead camel. <laughs> like, what the fuck are you talking about? Well, I mean, I, I, you know, I no, think you're. You uh, cannot even justify I'm gonna try. what the hell that means. I'm going to try. Okay. It's like an allusion to being in lockdown and, you know, in the pandemic and you can't go anywhere. And so you're like chained to a heavy, immovable object, like a dead camel. Of all the things, <laughs> of all I mean, the you, things, it's like okay. Let you me ask are, you a question, Jesse. You, you know, you, have you been to Germany? No, you haven't. You haven't, haven't even left Ohio. You've never seen been on too a many plane. Camels in Germany, at least the you, pictures I've seen. I'm just know, saying. Do you know there are no camels in Germany? I do not know that. Okay, I do not know that. Well, then you don't know this man's experience. Don't don't write his story for him. There's also, if you listen as you're going through the songs on this album. He has a certain like inflection at the end of I say inflection. It's kind of like a uh, he goes ah and uh, okay. He says uh, every once in a while he'll does do that like right after a lyric. Mm-hmm. But I've noticed that like he does it after a lyric that just doesn't make sense. Like he immediately regrets what he said. <laughs> like, he's like. Ah, <laughs> I uh, have said that. <laughs> shouldn't shouldn't have said fuck twenty twenty in front of my seven year old. <laughs> I shouldn't have done that. Ah, <laughs> uh, I know it's probably something that he does because it's very audible. He would he wouldn't leave it in there unless it was like kind of his signature card or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I know it's probably not him regretting. It's just him using his whatever he does there. But it, it's I think it's hilarious that he put that in there right after like chained to a dead camel and he's like uh but uh <laughs> what uh, rhymes with babble <laughs> cabal got it <laughs> uh but yeah the three i mean hey uh, we get the same formula that we are we have been seeing we got mm-hmm. we got uh hp and then we have the female vocalist it gets quiet and you know this is standard stuff but it's still good it's yeah. nothing that i'm going hey this is you know this is horrible. Hang the DJ has some Middle Eastern influence into it, which is awesome. Hang um, the camel. Yeah, that happened two songs ago. I'm not <laughs> making the transition or the connection. Yeah, I like Groundhog happening. Day. I really like the lyrics of Groundhog Day. That that actually resonated with me a lot. Yeah, and you could tell that a lot of these songs again were influenced and impacted by what happened in 2020 with the pandemic and just sure. being cooped up and trying to get out. It. Yeah, for a lot of people, it did feel like Groundhog Day. You just got up, you didn't do anything, you sat around the house, and 
that's it. And then you went back back to bed and got up and did it all over again. So yeah. um, it's good stuff, man. Yeah, man, I'm having a good time with this. You know, I mean, people who are like listen to our podcast are like, when they, you know, like, can't you guys just do metal? Like, nope. hold your horses. This is this is some fun stuff. Yeah, we're having a good time. You should try it out. Yes, sir. All right, these next three tracks, as we get to the back half of this album, we have Rave Teacher, Anastasia, and The Devil's Symphony. Here we go. Things that I say and things that I do Won't keep quiet now I've found you We can go home, baby, we can just be All I need is somebody like me Put me up high and take me to stars All the way I wanna go far I can run wild, baby, I can run free Now I know you're somebody like me Yeah! man what do you think about those last three i like brave teachers i thought that was pretty fun um anastasia is uh instrumental i mean it was fine but you know it kind of reminded me of back of my old dancing days devil symphony was really cool yeah rave teacher is my favorite off of this album uh that is yeah, probably put me, put me down for fuck 2020 okay done deal it is on uh anastasia I mean, just like I said, it's getting played at a rave. (laughs) Uh, All these are getting... Actually, HP is the DJ. All right, that's all. He he feels like he's the DJ just coming in there and getting you ready for the tunes, it seems like. Like, Uh, This feels like this would pump you up like before a football game or something. Like, 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 oh, you know, everyone scream for your team. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. One One of the songs earlier in the album, I think it was the We Love Hardcore, 
Mm-hmm. Dude, as it reaches the end of that song, I'm like, it is arena style stuff. Like it is going to be played uh, either in between plays or quarters at a football game. It sounds like it's that type of song. But yeah, a lot of this stuff belongs in the arena, in my opinion. Uh, Devil's Symphony is good as well. I, I, again, we're not getting... Uh, I think Anastasia got on my nerves just because it was so repetitive and the little bit that you played, and it's seven minutes long. Um, but it picks up as it goes along. It's probably, in my opinion, the weakest track on here. Uh, but yeah, we're we're... We're rocking and rolling. Rave Teacher, like I said, is my favorite. There's a lot of references, if you'll notice, and you may have seen this when you were doing your research, but like Chapter 6, Chapter 6. Mm-hmm. So uh, what that is is it's a reference to the who has left and who has come on to the band. Now we're in the Chapter 6, and there's a new member uh, after somebody had left. So when he's referencing Chapter 6, that's what he's talking about. They actually have, which, which is, I think, a neat way of kind of framing your band and where it's at when you're doing the music. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, hey, this is our new chapter we're doing. Well, they're at their sixth right now. Uh, but when you when you talk about Scooter, you're like, yeah, I was a big fan of Chapter 3. And <laughs> it's just an interesting way of saying that, you know, uh, you know referencing that band. Uh, but anyway, yeah, man, I'm, I'm still having a good time. I, I, you can't... You, you can't say that anything on here is lackluster. It's all really heavy. It's all really uh, heart pumping. It's all really high stepping, having a good old time. Get me the glow stick. Pass me the ecstasy. Yes, sir. <laughs> God, boy, what a, what a year we've been having. Marijuana, ecstasy. I got a next <laughs> next album we do has got to be about cocaine. Um, <laughs> I've got. I, I could imagine there's a couple out there that uh, we could find. I'm sure we can we can get some buck cherry on here because I love the cocaine. Uh, yes, Mama, you can do. You wait. <laughs> All right. Um. Last last uh, two album uh, last two uh, songs to go here. These days and wandering star, and then we're out of here. Thank you, Chris. 
prisoner and the planes can bake you dry Snow can burn your eyes but only people make you cry Home was made for coming from for dreams of going to Which with any luck will never come true my goodness okay <laughs> <laughs> last one speaking of off the beaten path wow bizarre right it's not what i was expecting no <laughs> uh i mean i i followed the wiki link to go find out i knew this was a cover mm-hmm. obviously uh, 1951 so wandering star was a number one single in the uk for three weeks and then in Ireland for two weeks for Leave Marvin in March of 1970. Uh, y- sure. Sorry. You know, I I mean, I don't know what you do after this hard pumping uh, techno <laughs> rave that we just went through. That is what you like... listen to in the diner after you've gone to the rave and you, you know, and you're eating disco fries. <laughs> you are walking away from said rave. Yeah. And this song is playing. <laughs> For sure. This is you and your friends, hot, sweaty, cold, and drinking coffee and eating disco fries and just like, just getting the rave out of your system. Yeah. Jesse Starcher, I had fun tonight. And if you want to continue the fun and want to check out the rest of. Uh, Scooter's catalog. Click our link in the description for getamazonmusic.com slash W2M network. That's getamazonmusic.com slash W2M network. You get a free 30 days of Amazon Music. You can stream all the Scooter you want. You can stream this album. You can stream the previous 19 albums. You can check out some other happy hardcore bands if you want. You can check out Lords of Acid, which is just straight up, you know, industrial techno. Oh, you know, if you're, you know, God save the rave, Jesse Stark. That's what I'm trying to tell you. And if you want to save the rave, you need to listen to the rave music. And the rave music is on AmazonMusic.com, which you can listen to for free for 30 days. If you click our link, again, AmazonMusic.com slash W2M Network, fill out the form, uh, agree to, to a 30-day trial. And if you don't like it, you can cancel it or you can keep it. You pay the monthly fee and just have a grand old time. That's right. All right, man, um, we're going to close up shop here for tonight. Uh, kind of a shorter show than usual. Didn't tell too many stories about our children. <laughs> but, <laughs> but that's all right. You know, sometimes it's just, you know, just two bros hanging out, saving the rave. You know what I mean? That's right, buddy. All right. Uh, so this past week, uh, we kicked it off with a re-airing. Of, speaking of just a couple of bros talking, me and Jesse Stark, Jesse Starcher pitched me a show and was like, I want to hear your thoughts on this. And then he was like committed to doing every season of it against his will. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we, uh, so this is a re-airing of the very first Black Mirror season one. Just I think it was three episodes that, we, uh, that season. Uh, all I know is a guy fucked a pig. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a, uh, man, that's a good show. So uh, that's uh, that's up in the archives now. Uh, Monday, uh, we reviewed Money in the Bank. Sean Comer and I reviewed, uh, did a long road to ruin for Fear Street on Netflix, all three movies. Uh, Alexis Hanna and I reviewed Space Jam 2. Tomorrow, uh, myself and Sean Comer will put the original Space Jam on trial. Um, this weekend, we've got a re-airing of our review of hotel transylvania 2 just in time for the new hotel transylvania 4 uh also gi joe snake eyes uh is being released in theaters and jesse will be releasing a syndicated source material for gi joe versus transformers plus we're going to throw up an extra commentary for that jesse and i did for gi joe the movie cobra la 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 La, 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 la. Did that syndicated source material like just happen to po- fall on that date? Yeah, believe Did it or not. It seriously? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, crazy, right? 
That is crazy. Um, and uh, this Sunday, we got another re-airing from the archives going way back. How far back? Way, way back. Uh, clutch Retrospective. Remember that? Remember that? 1993 oh, yeah. to 2009. Love it. Yeah, I think it was that like right before um, uh, Earth Rocker maybe came out or uh, Psychic Warfare. This is the one, one that made me realize I was going to be friends with you. Yeah, this is the one that got the love <laughs> affair started. So, That's right, buddy. Um, so check out all those shows. Jesse's got some syndicated service material for you. So uh, go ahead and check out the archive for all of your favorite Rattledge and Broadcasting Network shows from myself, Jesse Starcher, Robert Winfrey, the whole nine yards. Uh, so for Jesse Starcher, I'm Mark Rattledge. This has been the Metal Hammer of Doom. God save the rave. Be well, be safe, and behave. My name's Dave.